Welcome to Good Game Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. And I'm Bajo. And I am Darren, the data analyzing robot for the ruthless extermination of noobs. Guys, coming up on today's show, we are reviewing a brand new Ratchet and Clank game for PS4. Finally! Yes. Finally. <laughs> Come on, I even have a ship. It disassembles so it can infiltrate enemy strongholds. <laughs> so what do you say? Oh, finally seeing Clank in proper high definition is a sight for sore visual receptors. <laughs> and from shiny 3D to snappy 2D, we dare to enter the dungeon. <laughs> Okay, Darren, it's time for some trivia. My brain is ready. Affirmative. Prepare your memory banks, Spawnlings, because it's time for Darren's Challenge! Today, I'm asking you this. In Minecraft, what are the three breeds of cat that can spawn when you tame an ocelot? Answer at the end of the show. Mm, I don't know, but they're all cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we should see if Goose has some gaming picks for us. Goose! Hi, guys. You've got a cat, don't you? What's your cat's name? Guys, you know my cat's name is Lando. He's like the best cat in the whole world. In fact, his favourite toy to play with is a Millennium Falcon oh, on a string, cute. which is great because his name's Lando from Star Wars. Star and Wars. he runs up and down the stairs and actually yeah. plays fetch with me. And he's got probably, a really strong get on with the show, oh, Goose. Actually, just sort of almost too hard to pick up sometimes. Goose. So I let him run Goose. around under my feet. Goose. And, uh, Goose! Goose! Gaming picks, Goose. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, right, here are my gaming picks for this week. First up, graphics card manufacturer NVIDIA has announced a new type of Formula E racing, dubbed Robo Racing, will start this year. Formula E racing uses cars powered solely by electricity, but Robo Racing takes things a step further with the cars driven solely by artificial intelligence. They say this will let the cars race faster and more dangerously as there's no risk to human life. There'll even be a special fight mode category of races where full contact is allowed. And if that wasn't all sci-fi enough for you, the cars have even been designed by the same guy who designed the light cycles in the latest Tron. And while we're on the topic of vehicular combat, an animator known as Steve, who runs the Pixel Kingdom YouTube channel, has created a tantalising taste of what a Mario Kart version of Rocket League might look like. Oh, please make that happen, Nintendo. And finally, a Stardew Valley player known as Chinchilla decided to take a break from farming to pump out some jams. And I'm not talking about strawberry jam, no siree. Specifically, Chinchilla recreated the Chocobo theme from Final Fantasy by building an elaborate maze out of the game's drum and flute blocks. Mmm, them some tasty jams. And finally, my pick of the week from you, Spawnlings, goes to 13-year-old Tom, who's made these impressive Lego recreations of Wheatley, Atlas, Peabody and GLaDOS from Portal 2. Great work, Tom. Remember, if you've created something in the Gamerverse, you can send it in here. All right, back to you guys in the studio. Oh, that reminds me, Lando's actually a black and white cat, so he's quite hard to see in the dark, so sometimes I'm looking around and... No, no, wait, I've got more! Thanks, Goose. All right, guys, are you ready to test your timing and flex your fingers in bullet hell? Uh, yes. Let's pump up the tunes and enter the gungeon. Doof, 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 doof. Enter the Gungeon is a top-down shooter with loads of personality. Your goal is to survive a series of dungeons which get increasingly more difficult the longer you stay alive. And all to a rocking soundtrack. The music is great, isn't it? And that's a good thing because it takes the sting out of the constant failure. <laughs> you will be defeated a lot in this game. Enter the Gungeon falls into the roguelike genre, where failure means going all the way back to the start with nothing but your wits and experience. But you do unlock weapons and items as you progress, which will then start to appear in the game. That's right, Darren, and that's the mechanic that pulls you through again and again, just teasing you to have one more go. These 
games are often referred to as bullet hell shooters as well because there are just so many bullets to avoid. Look at this. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Guys, this game is super hard. Yeah, even when you're doing really well, it only takes a few bad moves or a silly mistake to ruin everything. It's definitely one of the hardest games we've ever played on Good Game Spawn Point. But do not be disheartened, Spawnlings. Failure is your reward. Each retry will fill you with new energy to beat the game. New gear to find, new secrets to unlock. Oh, success is possible with hard work. It's quite a mysterious game too, isn't it? Secrets are everywhere, but they're really hard to find. Uh, there are lots of tricks you can do to make life easier for you too. Uh, for example, some weapons fire faster if you tap the fire button instead of holding it down. Yeah, also if you catch on fire, then rolling will help you put it out quicker. <laughs> And if you persist long enough, eventually you'll unlock shortcuts to later levels. I really liked the levels themselves. The game generates rooms procedurally. This means you might see the same room more than once, but never the same dungeon. It mixes everything up. Procedurally and randomly generated maps are common with this genre too. It helps keep the game feeling fresh as players will be retrying constantly. I love that sound as you burst through the doors into a new room. It's always exciting and tense, just not knowing what's on the other side. Sometimes it's ghosts. <laughs> 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 well, actually, the goats are the least scary enemies in the game. It's the bosses you have to watch out for. They all have unique and complex attack patterns that require quick timing. Oh, I especially like the tank boss. Oh, such destruction! <laughs> Oh yeah, I have yet to beat that boss, Darren. Tough tank! You have to roll a lot to avoid damage. And when you're rolling, you're temporarily invincible, like in many games. And I found with this one, rolling into a bullet wave was actually the best way to avoid damage. You also have a limited number of blanks, which clear the screen of bullets if things get too hectic. There are a few classes to choose from. My favourite was the Hunter. Her crossbow fires slow, but is very accurate. Also, the hunter has a doggy. Oh, who's a good doggy? Who's My a doggy. Good, dog? good boy. My favourite was the marine. I just found that his weapons and abilities were really useful in the early game. When you're learning the ropes. The game also supports local co-op, and it is a blast to play with friends, but the omission of online multiplayer is baffling. If I had one criticism, it's that I wish those more powerful weapons dropped a touch more frequently, because I think you really need them to make solid progress. Yeah, that's true. My favourite weapon was the Ness light gun, but I only found it once. It was by far the best gun in the game. Pew, 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 pew. And every now and then, a duck shoots out from the classic game Duck Hunt. Quack. Quack. Such retro, much laser. Wow. <laughs> well, overall, I enjoyed the snappy feel and the huge variety of weapons, so I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, there's a lot to like with this. If you stick with it, you'll have a blast. I'm giving it four out of five rubber chickens. Now it's time for you two to answer some questions at the Ask SP desk. Oh, oh, oh. Off you go. Thanks, Sarah. Pew, 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 pew. Oh. OK, first up this week, we have this one from the king of all squirrels. Furball and Nut, who was in Red Lynch, Queensland. Hmm. King right off the bat. Furball and Nut mm. implies two people, and yet it is just one king squirrel. Got a lot of furballs and nuts under their king's dominium. Uh. In Minecraft, how do you make a roller coaster turn? And can you go straight up and straight down? P.S. Bajo is a noob. P.P.S. He should drink from the noob cup. Well, Your Highness, just for that noob comment, I don't think we should answer your question, and I think you should perhaps drink from the noob cup. So there, Your Highness. Well, if you don't answer the question, Bajo, everyone will think you're just a noob because you don't know the answer. 
Well, I do too know the answer. Okay, fine. Okay, so your so-called screwly highness, roller coasters or minecarts will simply follow whatever direction the track you laid down. So put a turn in the track and the cart will turn. And no, they can't go straight up or down. Tracks can only go up a one-to-one -one ratio slope. So that means they can go one block up or down for every one block wide they travel. Well, they can also technically just fall off the end of a track onto another directly below it. So in that case, I guess you could almost say they go straight down. But as far as I'm aware, there's no way to shoot a cart straight up. The best you could do is a sort of spiral up. Hmm. Well, there you go, Bajo. I think you proved that you weren't a noob quite well there. Uh, but speaking of cards, let's move on to this one now from the King of Sandwiches, who is in Perth, Western Australia. Hey, GDSP, Bajo. Sorry, I don't know how to spell your name. But is there gonna be a Mario Kart 9 and 10 this year? Well, your sandwich highness, firstly, I'd say no. There's oh. almost no chance there's gonna be both a Mario Kart 9 and 10 this year. Nintendo has never released two Mario Kart games in one year. There is a slim chance we'd see them release Mario Kart 9, though, as a launch title for the Nintendo NX, which is rumoured to be maybe coming out at the end of the year. That seems like a bit of a long shot, though, and until we actually hear anything official about the NX and when it's going to launch, I wouldn't get your hopes up too much. Also, based on the timing of the last few sequels, they've typically released a new Mario Kart every three years, and since the last one came out in 2014, that would suggest we could expect one next year. Yeah, but this is all pure speculation, though, so for now, we don't know anything about when Mario Kart 9 or 10 will come out. So, moving on to this one from King of Video Games. Oh, me. Who is in American Perth, outside Australia. American Perth? Well, howdy, partner. Howdy, partner with the cheese sandwiches. American cheese. In the game Portal 2, how do I get to the last one of Ratman's lairs? I have watched heaps of YouTube videos, but I do exactly what they do, but I can't get in. Please answer this, or else I will erase your memory of how to play video games. I will also make Darren explode. <laughs> also, Darren is a mega noob. Bunter, do these. Well, we can definitely help you out with that. So, the last Ratman Den is in Test Chamber 17, and to get there, you'll need to do a little bit of crafty portaling. So, firstly, portal your way up onto this bridge. Now portal that bridge up here to the roof so you can get to this broken glass. Then you can shoot a portal through the gap in the elevator door to get back here. Now, look up through this fan and try to find a spot to shoot a portal onto. And voila! Simply go through that portal and you'll be in Ratman's den. Well, good luck with it, but uh, let's move right along to this one from the King of Good Game SP, who is in the Hall of Kings in Victoria. I thought Darren was the king of Good Game SP. I thought it was Lee. Hmm. Can Darren please answer my questions? If not, I will use lasers! Anyway, I have three questions. One, is there a way to find any song that you don't know from a game? Two, on a scale of one to ten, how big of a noob is Darren? And three, is it true that the Wii U will stop selling this year? I really want one, so if they're all gone, no Super Mario Maker. <laughs> Thanks. And remember, lasers are love. Lasers are life. P.S. Can Bajo do a greeting, please? If you don't, say bye-bye to your job. The king of good game, SP. Oh, well, I don't want to lose my job, Hex. Um, um, <laughs> uh, I guess we should get Darren on the line. Darren, how's it going? Hello, how Hello. can I help you? Hello. Well, this morning here was wondering if there was a way to find out the names of songs from games. Go! Uh, well, there are certainly a few ways you could find that out. Uh, many game soundtracks are often available for purchase or can be freely streamed. Uh, so you can usually just listen to samples to find the song you were looking for. And song names are usually listed in games credits, although I suppose it's hard to tell what a song sounds like just from the name. Affirmative. If it's a popular song from a commercial artist that you want to find out about and you have a mobile device available, then there are apps that can listen to the song and find out the information for you. So I'd recommend using those. Good tips, Darren. And hey, while you're here, the spawning was also asking on a scale of 1 to 10, how big of a noob are you? I'd say at least 11. <laughs> Minus infinity and noob. Um, sorry, Darren, that's not even an option on the scale. It has to be between 1 and 10. Well, you said 11. 
Hey, I'm not the one on trial here, mister. Oh. All right, oh. guys, no one's on trial. And we know you're not a noob, Darren. Oh. So let's just move on to the King's last question. Is it true that the Wii U is going to stop being sold this year? Negative. While a newspaper did report that the Wii U would stop being manufactured at the end of this year, Nintendo has denied that the report was true. And even if it was true, there would still be Wii U consoles available for sale for a while. Well, thanks for your help there, Darren. Yeah, thanks, Darren. Oh, bye. 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 But on that note, I think we're out of time for this week. But if you'd like to ask us a question, then you can go here and send it in. Hex, did you notice that every letter that came in today was from royalty? We have a lot of kings and queens in Australia. We do, we do. And they all watch the show. I'm going to run out of bowels. I know. I like to know that we're worthy of the royals, though. Mm, yes, oh. quite. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to team up with that lovable Lombax and his reliable robot in Ratchet and Clank. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Ratchet and Clank. So many robots, so many lasers. Pew, 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 pew. your Omni Wrench. and Clank series has been around since 2002, offering up one of the best mixes of action, platforming and puzzle solving in the business. Yes, and it's actually a reimagining of the very first game. It tells the origin story of how Ratchet and Clank become friends and their first adventure together to try and stop the nefarious Blagian Empire. So what do I call you? I suppose my proper designation is Warbot Defect B54297. Maybe I'll just... Call you Clank. The Blargs have grown sick of their own polluted and overpopulated planet and are invading other planets to try and steal their best bits to make their own ideal world. And it's up to our dynamic duo to stop them. And while it is essentially the same plot as the first game, it's told in a completely new way with some significant differences that we won't spoil. Yeah, overall, it's just an excellent story with great heroes to root for and villains to jeer at. Mm. <laughs> but they've struck a great balance between giving fans something new to enjoy while keeping it familiar enough to hit that nostalgia too. Affirmative. And this has actually been made in conjunction with the new film, with both film and game sharing character models, world designs and story. Yes, and I think that collaboration has really helped this shine visually. Lock and load, Rangers. Sit up and rally in the aft airlock. All right, team. Let's bring it in. Remember, our target is Chairman Drek. The quality of the cutscenes rival most cinematic animated films. And the in-game graphics are almost as good, too. I had to stop and admire the view on every single planet. There's so much attention to detail. Guys, this is a seriously good-looking game. Rise and shine, Kizzle Plateau. It's 8 a.m. and it's going to be a hot one today. Yeah, and it's just so good to see Ratchet and Clank going back to their roots. You know, we were a bit underwhelmed by some of their last few games, which focused on co-op or tower defence, for example. And it was starting to feel like the series had lost its way. But this is classic Ratchet and Clank doing what they do best. Affirmative. While the series' signature excellent level design and platforming is in great form here, it's always been the weapons that are the real stars of the show. Apart from the robots, of course. Uh, and this is a bit of a best-of collection for the series when it comes to the arsenal, bringing in many of the best weapons from all their games, uh, such as the ever-chatty robotic companion, Mr. Zircon. Hello, sticky aliens. Or the boogie-licious Groovatron. <laughs> boogie, 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 boogie. My favourite new weapon was the Pixelizer, which turns enemies into giant clumps of pixels, complete with retro sound effects. And check out how fast it clears this room. Super effective. I'm surprised you didn't say the sheep in Ada Baja. It turns enemies into exploding sheep. I mean, that's awesome. This is also a sort of best of in other ways too, incorporating many of the mechanics and refinements the series has made over the years. Oh, such as strafing. 
and a deep upgrade system for your weapons. Throughout levels, you'll find chunks of raritanium, which can be spent on weapons perks such as extra damage or larger area of effects. And there are even special mystery nodes that grant you mysterious but awesome bonuses. And as you use a weapon, you'll also level it up, which opens up even more upgrade options. And once you max out a weapon's level, it transforms into a super powerful version. With any luck, my engineer friend will be there. Yeah, even the basic blaster or combustor turns into a powerhouse of a weapon when it becomes the magma combustor. The only slight downside is that there are almost too many weapons to choose from. You just won't have enough time or rare titanium to max out and play with everything. Well, once you finish the game, you could run through the whole game again in challenge mode with all of your weapons and upgrades unlocked from the start. So that'll give you plenty of time to play with any weapons you didn't use much or upgrade on your first run through. Oh, affirmative. And with loads of collectibles you likely missed the first time round, there's some good motivation to play through challenge mode and collect everything. Hidden gold bolts, for example, can unlock special filters and cosmetic items, and even cheats. And there's also a new collectible card feature, which gives you various bonuses when you complete them. Or even the powerful and rare Rhino. Yeah, they've really nailed that drive to collect things, which is a sign of a great platformer. Even just smashing crates to get bolts is so satisfying. Affirmative. Another thing this game excels at is pacing. The pace at which you find new weapons and special gear, explore new planets, or fly in spaceships, or race hoverboards, or ride on grind rails. <sighs> There's just always something new and exciting to play with. Yeah, it's hard to put down, isn't it? Although I do feel like Clank is a little bit underused as a sidekick. He's mostly just a way for Ratchet to double jump. He just needs a few attacks of his own or something to make him feel like a bigger part of the action. Well, he does have his own special sections where he has to go off on his own and has to solve puzzles by reprogramming other robots. And any section of a game which is all about robots gets bonus points in my book. But I wholeheartedly agree that Clank should get a bigger role. In fact, if anything, he should be the main hero. It should be Clank and Ratchet. Or maybe even Clank and Darren. Oh, well, what to call it? Or maybe uh, 48 Noobs. Or Lethal Noob. Or Noob Hour. Or Double Noob. Oh, oh, oh so much potential. I would play all of those games, Darren. But we should wrap this up. Final thoughts, Hex? You know what, guys? I think this might be one of the greatest platformers of all time. I'm giving it five out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, it's masterfully designed, isn't it? They've taken the best of old school platforming and brought it into the modern day. I'm giving it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. Well, we're almost at the end of the show and time is ticking away, so Darren, you better give us the answer to your challenge quick smart. Oh, affirmative Hex. At the start of the show, I asked you this. In Minecraft, what are the three breeds of cat that can spawn when you tame an ocelot? And the answer is... A tabby, a tuxedo, or a Siamese. Yes, yeah, a bit more blocky than cats in real life, but still adorable. Next week on the show, we look left, we look right, we look left again in Disney Crossy Road. <laughs> check out an Aussie-developed action RPG inspired by Zelda, Warden Melody of the Undergrowth. Crossy Road was made in Australia too, so in fact, it's an all-Aussie episode. You know what, guys? We should do an Aussie special. Yes! <gasps> With cork hats and barbecues. And lamingtons, because we've got to have cake. I can't wait. Until next time, may all your games be good ones. Hex out. Barge you out. Darren out. Are you going to start up a barbie for us, Darren? Oh, oh, oh of course. Put some oh, sangers on? Oh, 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 you know it. Maybe some prawns and oh, oh, fairy bread. Oh.